Hi everyone. I am anonymous traveler from intellectual exercise. Today, I will discuss the relationship dynamics between man and the god. However, I have to clarify one thing. There are two different types of god. And for spiritual alchemist and occultist, in the spirit of a DIY attitude, the concept of God could become something very different than other humans as the practice gets deeper. First of all, anybody can start walking the path. One can be agnostic or even atheist, and it doesn't matter. In order to pursue spiritual alchemy or occult practice, one does not need to believe in God. Only thing that is necessary is an attitude of researcher who is cautious and critical and yet objective. However, as practice gets deeper, one would realize that nothing is what it seems, and the best example of that axiom is the nature of God. Let me clarify the categories of God. There are traditional gods and goddesses which are related to various religions and mythologies. I will call them class 2 gods and goddesses. However, there is a very unordinary god who exists in the outer void outside of this universe. I will call this god as class 1 god. This god has no religion and its existence is hidden throughout human history. The domain of this God is outside of the universe and this God has not created this universe and also not involved with any of the affairs of the universe. I will call this God the Supreme God of Unmanifestation or the God who is beyond Big Bang. This universe is not the only universe. There has been countless Big Bangs and subsequent events such as growth, maintenance, decline, and the death of the universe. There has been endless cycles of cosmic birth and the cosmic death, and each cycle was started from a Big Bang. And another good word to call this Supreme God of Unmanifestation is the Supreme Deathless, because this Supreme Unmanifestation is the only one that can go through the endless cycles of cosmic birth and cosmic death without dying. All the other advanced spiritual beings, such as gods and goddesses, will die along with the destruction of the universe. So the Spring God of Unmanifestation alone is truly deathless and immortal. And this Supreme God of Unmanifestation has never created this world and has no interest in this universe or humans. However, all the class 2 gods and goddesses came from this Supreme God of Unmanifestation. However, this Supreme God of the Unmanifestation 
is not even interested in the affairs of those gods and goddesses. Although this god has no relationship with humans, yet there is a hidden but powerful connection. There is a hidden divine spark within man. However, that divine spark never came from any creator gods from various religions. That special hidden divine spark came from this supreme god of manifestation. The communion with this god is only possible for people who became the master of outer void. However, one can get a glimpse of this supreme of manifestation by accessing the deathless element. The deathless element are fractions of this supreme god of a manifestation since the essence of this god is deathless. It can be only recognized by a person whose inner divine spark has been activated and is only activated when one becomes a master of the inner void. By encountering the deathless element, one becomes aware of the existence of the source of such element and the such source is the supreme deathless itself and the supreme god of a manifestation is just another name for the supreme deathless. Throughout human history of each cycle of universe, very few people encountered this mysterious god of a manifestation. Those are the advanced spiritual alchemists, occultists, meditators, and other various practitioners of mystic traditions. In the West, this strange god of supreme or manifestation came to be known mostly from Gnostics who paid a great price for their knowledge. Many of them were executed by the powers that be at the time. However, I have to clarify one thing. Although some people are confused with Gnosticism, with esoteric Christianity, they are different. Gnostics see the God of Christianity as evil. According to the true Gnostic view, this God of Christianity created this world for his entertainment and he enjoys watching people's suffering and misery. So Gnosticism cannot be esoteric Christianity. And as a spiritual alchemist, we are cultivating the hidden divine spark within man and such spark came from the supreme god of manifestation. Although there has been no religion for this god of manifestation, some seekers were able to penetrate into its domain. That domain is within the outer void. And the relation between human and this supreme of manifestation is radically different than other God's cases. By the way, I already mentioned about the master of inner void and the master of outer void in other video. And let me address one of the key differences between these two. As I explained before, 
one needs to be the master of the inner void first in order to pursue the mastery of the outer void. If one became a master of the inner void, he can project his awareness or astral body to a place of his desire. But if one eventually became a master of outer void, additionally, he can also project his physical body to a place of his desire and appear in two places at the same time in flesh and blood. The difference here is the master of outer void has gained an access to the domain of a supreme manifestation and as a result became a master of manifestation. And unlike the master of inner void who can create only the forms based on subtle energy vibrations, the master of outer void can also create physical forms using the secret principle of manifestation that is only accessible for those who penetrated the domain of the supreme of manifestation. When one becomes the master of outer void, there are two paths available for him or her. Those people will choose their path based on their preference and the temperament. Type 1 people choose to become the one with the unmanifestation. These people will not come back after the next Big Bang. They will be remain unmanifested just like the Supreme God of Unmanifestation. The domain of the Unmanifestation is beyond the existence of universe and time. Type 2 people choose to become an independent awareness outside of Unmanifestation. These people will come back after the next Big Bang into the manifested universe. However, the biggest downside for those people who decided to come back to the manifested universe is they will lose all of the memories of their spiritual attainment when they come back after another Big Bang. By the way, Although this Supreme God of Unmanifestation came to be known mostly by the Gnostics in the West, some alchemists and the occult practitioners also encountered this Supreme God of Unmanifestation, but they kept their silence and hide the knowledge in the alchemy and the other esoteric books. It was necessary in order to avoid the torture and execution along with many other reasons. And in the East, this Supreme God of a Manifestation came to be known mostly from the most advanced hardcore meditators. One of the names referred to those most advanced hardcore meditators is Arahant, and it is the best word to explain the nature of the master of outer void. Arahant means one who is worthy or conqueror or enemy destroyer. So who was the enemy destroyed and conquered by these 
unusual people, a r a h a n t The enemy is the outer gatekeeper that I discussed in previous videos. However, the outer gatekeepers are not one, but many. Some of them are Maras, some of them are Gods and the Goddesses, and some of them are Demons. However, their motivation is just the same. They feed on human energy, so they want to make sure that we would stay in a spiritual coma. They are like a guard standing in front of our customized jail cell. They are the enemy of humanity and in that context, Arahant are conquering heroes who defeated his or her enemy and escaped from his or her jail cell successfully. And it was those a r a h a n t who taught the possibility of breaking down the great illusion, Maya, and becoming a master of unmanifestation. So today, I have discussed the relation between man and the supreme god of unmanifestation. However, regarding all the other gods and the goddesses and their relation with man is entirely different situation. I will discuss this issue in another video. Thanks for listening and all the best.